Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all our attendees. Thank you for joining Bexel Manager Online Training Program. My name is Alexander Ilic, and I will be your panelist today. I'm an architect and senior BIM manager in Bexel Consulting Company with more than six years of experience in implementation of Bexel Manager on international construction projects. Uh, let's first start with the short general information recap about our educational program for those that were not with us on the previous sessions. Uh, I have to say that our training sessions in this training program are based on our latest document called Bexel Manager Step-by-Step -Step Workflow Guide a compre comprehensive document containing detailed explanations and exercise materials covering all, all features and all functionalities of our software. So these training sessions are made in a way to walk you through the lessons and through the exercises and to show you the content. Of course, we cannot go in detail because we're limited with the available time, but we can show you basic informations and basic exercises that will help you later in implementing this program to your personal training. If you haven't tried our software yet, I invite you to go to our official website and to request trial. We offer two different types of trial licenses. We offer standard trial for unlimited for all users which provides 30 day trial period with full range of Bexel manager features. So 3D, 4D and 5D BIM analysis, everything could be exercised and you can just request it. The only limitation is that you have to register with your company email or if you are student or a professor with the university email address. Of course, for the educational license or for the professors, PhD students and students, we offer one year free license with full range of features of Bexel Manager. And in this way, we are trying to support our educational community all around the globe. And the third option that you have under trial request uh, tab is demonstration request. That means if you want to see more in detail features of the software, to, to see the workflows, to explore it before you decide to purchase commercial license, you can request demonstration and some of our colleagues will have a Zoom meeting with you and show you the basic software features. Uh, once you register on a, on a Bexel Manager website through trial request, or if you purchase a commercial license, you will get access to Bexel user area. So you're going to have credentials for the access. You can access Bexel user area through the link on the website like this. So basically, you're going to get three basic windows. The first two are only related to the settings of your uh, access credentials. And the third one leads you to the online web platform where we constantly upload and update new training materials, education, educational materials, and different support materials that we will just briefly mention right now. So the first chapter covers manuals that are available, handbook and manuals available in different languages, as well as the document that we were talking about that is used for the basis for this educational program. The second chapter has video tutorial materials. If you want to see all of these exercises and workflows in the real in the in the video format unless instead of the written documents uh, the next chapter is covers add-ins so we upload free add-ins for all our users that extend 
the features and functionalities of software to a certain extent. We also offer open API scripts that could serve as the basis for your own customization of our software. So if you have any programming skills and any knowledge of C-sharp programming language, you can reconfigure certain functionalities of our software and use it for your own benefit. The next chapter is pretty much unique to our software and very important for our users. It offers you free demo sample projects. This means full sample projects, full BIM models with all the information integrated with all analysis completed. So for now, we are offering four different sample projects for different types of projects. So different, different types of construction uh, projects and also uh, from different authoring tools. So for now we have a large scale project that is developed in Revit. Uh, that, that's basically a big uh, BIM model with more than 20 buildings included and accompanying landscape roads and, and all the works including MEP. Uh, the another one is infrastructure sample projects develop in Profi. It's a, a German-based uh, infrastructure infrastructure authoring tool. Uh, the next one is Archicad-based office building sample projects for our users that use Archicad as their basic authoring tool. And the last one is the Revit-based Bexel sample model, the one that we are using in our educational sessions, and that is the basic exercise model in our step-by-step -step workflow guide. You can also find this model in the Italian and Spanish language for now. The next chapter covers support materials for our previous webinars. So here we're gonna also include support materials for this webinar after we complete the, the, the program next week. And the last one uh, contains databases. Basically those are the cost databases for different languages and different markets that are formatted and customized in a way to be easily integrated into Bexel Manager software. So you can freely use these databases on your projects through Bexel Manager. So after we cover this basic information, let's just make a short preview or short intro into today's lesson. The last week we started with the lesson eight, which covers scheduling and cost management. So we have completed the cost management session. We have covered the basics of the scheduling last week on Wednesday. And today we're gonna talk about more advanced features of the scheduling. So namely, when we talk about features of the scheduling in Bexel Manager, we will talk mainly on intelligent or smart scheduling engine as a unique workflow that we offer. Before we start with the lesson, I just want to remind you that you can ask questions through Q&A section. My colleagues will try to answer your questions. And at the end of this session, I will also try to answer event eventual unanswered ones or just to read a few of the answers so everybody can hear these interesting topics that were not covered through the lesson. So as in the previous ones, we will start from brief, brief review of the exercise materials that you can download through the link that I have just shown. So you're gonna get a simple zip file like this one, when you open it, you're gonna get a folder like this that contains uh, Bexel Manager sample project complete, which means complete model or project with all the analysis from the guide completely executed. So this one can serve as the basis as a reference point. So you can check your training results after you complete. You will get 
Bexel Manager Sample Project Start, which is actually start project, completely empty with no populated information and analysis executed. That will be starting point for your lessons. You're going to get lesson folders, which basically includes nothing more than the part of the of the document for that lesson only. So you can also find the complete document with all the lessons together and also small documents, partial documents for every lesson separated where you can find these really detailed step-by-step -step instructions with the visual presentation of every exercise. So I think it's very easy to follow and it's, it's very easy to understand that you can follow this program easily and basically have a very good training program on your own. Also for every chapter, you're gonna find complete model for that chapter. That means that you only have analysis executed in this chapter. So you can again use it as a reference point for your uh, exercise. And also you will find exchange materials that are needed for certain lessons. So as we have done it before, we're gonna open starting model that's completely empty with no analysis included, except for the sake of um, uh, this um, session, I just included few selection sets that we're gonna need to speed up the process of exercise because we are limited with the time. So as I said last time, we have covered the basic scheduling workflows. We have covered creating the schedule, creating the tasks, uh, importing schedule, exporting schedule, editing schedules, and all sorts of workflows regarding uh, connecting the schedule tasks with the elements in the model. Today, we're going to cover something that is more advanced, something that's unique to our software, and something that we market as intelligent or smart scheduling. So how it works, since the topic is a little bit more complicated, uh, I will start with a short presentation about the concept. So uh, we were when we started to thinking about improving the scheduling or schedule generation, we were thinking from the beginning. So we just started to analyze scheduling process as it is to see what, how it is done in reality. So from our experience on our projects, we just concluded that if you want to develop a detailed, well-developed schedule with all the information included, you will end up with the huge schedules that number hundreds and even thousands of tasks and connections. And that really requested a lot of time and a lot of engineering hours to develop. So in a lot of cases, we just didn't have enough time to develop such details, details scheduled. And besides that, even if we developed them, it was really hard later to adjust them, to, to, to make any adjustment and modifications that you always need to make because you always have some new things unforeseen in the project that you have to include in your schedule. So in the most cases, we just ended up with the short schedules with undeveloped structure and we tried or we struggled to coordinate with the stakeholders on the project on the daily basis. And it always ended up with the problems in communications, problems in coordinations from with the claims of the different stakeholders with the basically problems and losing money on the project. So when we were thinking about improving this process, we were sure that we have to develop really detailed schedules with a high amount of, of uh, uh, with, with huge number of tasks, with huge number of complex relationships, but we had to cut the time and resources needed for this job to be done. So we were thinking, we were starting from analyzing the schedule structure. 
And we figure out that if you analyze any standard construction schedule, you will see that it consists of two major levels of organization. You will see that the work distribution and organization within the schedule is basically spatial work distribution that actually defines where the works are executed within your construction site and functional work distribution or methodological work distribution, which actually defines the order of work of your activities on the project that is basically defined by technology of execution, by available resources and so on. So when we were talking about spatial distribution of works, we also figure out that you can analyze two different ways of spatial distribution that are present on any project in the world and probably in your projects from your experience as well. So every project has horizontal and vertical spatial distribu distribution. What that means. So if we have a large scale project, you always separate it to smaller organizational units within your schedule. So you never say foundation works on the project. You always specify the buildings on that project or the phases of that project or the blocks if it's a large scale project of, I don't know, 20 buildings or more. Or, and if you think about vertical distribution of work, you always separate your works by floors because that's the only natural way to do. So we were thinking about disorganization and how to simplify disorganization or implementation of this level of organization into the schedule creation. And we come up with this one. So if we talk about horizontal spatial distribution, as I said, you can divide your project into the buildings, into bigger project elements if it's a large scale project like blocks of few buildings, and you can divide every building into certain zones or phases because you don't want to execute, for example, the whole floor at once because it will require huge amount of workers and equipment. So every floor you just separate in the, in the smaller zones that you can attack a sort of with, with a limited number of resources and workers, and you can repeat that the next week. And when it comes to vertical spatial distribution, it's pretty, it's pretty simple and it's pretty intuitive on every project in the world. It just relies on the simple stories or building levels. But when we come to the functional distribution of works, we have identified basically two main levels of organization. We have the, identified the level of elements and level of sub elements or activities. So basically when you define your schedule in any traditional way, you always separate the works by element types. You always separate foundations, you always separate beams, floors, you always separate columns, walls, roofs. So those are basic categories that we all use. And when we talk about executing the elements for the, for example, you always have more activities that you need to execute to complete this element. Like in this shown example for the beam, you first have to uh, to put the formwork, then to install the reinforcement rebars, then to, to pour the concrete on this rebar, and after that to finish it and to remove the, the formwork. So we were thinking how we can use these three or four levers, levels of schedule organization to simplify the schedule creation. And we come up with this vision. So we were thinking, what if instead of creating every separate task and every separate relationship on the project, we somehow develop a system where we only have to define these levels of organization and to define relationships between these levels. And then we have smart computer algorithm that will connect these levels of organization and you know, interconnect them and generate the real schedule at the end automatically. And that would save the time. 
So today on our sample project, we are gonna demonstrate this process with our scheduling engine. Uh, for this one, I will just go briefly through project organization on this project. So I'm just gonna mimic the same organization levels that I show you in the, in the presentation. So let's say if we look at this project, this is a sample two stories high office building, then we can think about spatial organization of this project like this. Okay, to simplify everything and to fit into this 60 minutes time that we have for this presentation, today we're gonna just cover this example through structural works only because that's the simplest one and it's not gonna take too much time to show you the whole workflow only for these structural works. But as I said, this could be implemented on all works, on all projects on the world, and I'm gonna demonstrate it later. So if we got elements for structural works only and go to custom breakdown and try to see what is our organization when it comes to vertical spatial organization. So if it's a vertical organization of a project, Basically, we can just group all the elements that we need by level. We can color code them and then examine it through color coded view. And as we see on this project, as in every other project, we already have information that is really relevant for our schedule organization. We have elements sorted within the levels. So we have a vertical distribution of elements already done within authoring tool in 99.9%. .9%. So the next level organization for our simple building is the horizontal spatial organization. And for that one, we're going to try. So it's going to be horizontal organization. In this sample model, we have a certain parameter, a discrete property that we called construction sequence. So basically what we did is that we have defined the phases or the zones of the project. So during the, the, the model creation, we have defined that these elements will be phase one, these will be phase two, these phase three. So to, to, to come up with a more realistic schedule and to use less resources, but you can also do this by simple creating selection sets like here and just defining that the elements that belong to this selection set are phase one, these one phase two, and these are, are phase three. So basically, we saw that we can easily organize this project in a way to give us these two levels of schedule organization. And that's the, organ the spatial organization. But what about what we call functional organization of the project? Well, we can check that one as well. So from selected elements, if we try to exercise functional organization, of the project, we can just sort elements by let's say category. So in this way, we are able to basically find every different type of element or every different, different type of work that has to be executed on this project. But this is only analytical part. The, the question here is how we can use this information and utilize it to create schedule. Well, to do that, you in Bexel Manager, you just have to go to the schedule tab. And first we're gonna start with spatial organization because this is only analytics. You need somehow to tell the software 
that you want to use this spatial organization in, in certain order, order for your schedule creation. So you're going to go to the zone definition or zone editor, and it looks like this. So right now we want to create this. We want to create working sequence for vertical spatial organization of our schedule. So we're going to go to the zones again, and we're going to create new zone called demo levels. Okay, what we're going to do here, we're going to create linked nodes that will be connected to building stories of this model. So we're going to create these levels. These nodes are by the rule of the building story already connected to all the elements in this model that are placed on the certain level or certain building story. So what we have to do is in the schedule just to define relationships between these stories or the sequence. So we're going to just put them in the logical order from the lowest to the highest and just as in the previous session, if you remember when we were using logic view in the schedule creation, we're going to just in the same way define relationships between these floors. So what we basically say here is when you create a schedule to the, to the scheduling algorithm, please use this level of organization for the floors and use this order or this sequence in, in, in putting them together. So we put finish start relations. So what we simply said is after you finish sub level, start with the entry level. After you finish entry level, start with the first floor. After you finish first floor, go with the next one. So we just basically teach the software algorithm to think in the logical way and to, to actually start construction process one building story at the time. We can save this and we're gonna use it later. I'm gonna show you how. So the next level of organization is to define the phases, the horizontal organization, because we already know that if we try to execute the whole floor at once, it's gonna take too much resources and time. So it's much better to separate every level into three smaller zones and to execute these zones as one task with, with, uh, one, with the same resources. So basically to use the same number of workers for this part, this part, and this part, and to do it in three different, different phases in, in order to optimize your resource use on the project. So we're gonna do the same thing for our software. We're gonna just create another zone and call it demo phases. For this one, we're going to link it to the selection sets, for example, but you can use any property if it's defined. If it's not defined, you can just use simple selection sets in which you have defined which element goes to which phase. You can use this shortcut as well that says create relations it's going to create automatically relations between these categories. Um, in this example, it's not so important because you have only three or four categories, but I don't know, imagine the project of high rise building with 50 floors where you can basically with this command, just define finish start relation from the lowest floor to the, to, the, to the highest one with one click instead of defining relations between them by hand. So I'm gonna just a little bit modify this one and move the exterior areas to be executed after all three phases in the interior works are done. We have to save this. Okay, so basically for now we have defined the zones or we have defined spatial organization of our future schedule. But when it comes to the functional organization, we come up with the solution that the best way to relate your schedule with the activities on the project is to actually base your schedule structure 
on the structure of your cost database. So right now I'm gonna import the cost database because we don't have time to create one from scratch. So I'm gonna import the cost database, this one. Okay, cost classification and cost version like this. So let's go and check it. Okay, here we have all the works separated into categories and subcategories that we can use to define order of work execution on the site. How we're gonna do that? Well, for that, we're gonna use something that we call methodology or methodology editor. So in the same way we have created spatial organization of the schedule, we can do the same thing with the functional organization or methodology of work sequence. So basically we're gonna just create new demo methodology. In this case, only for structural works to simplify the exercise. And we can do it like this. Remember that within the zones, we were creating linked items that were created to certain parameters, spatial parameters of the project or to certain selection set, sets that we use to organize our projects. Right here, we're gonna use cost database as our basis. So we're gonna go to cost database and see all the types of works that we have for the structural works. And we're gonna create methodology items or the nodes for these types of works. Why is this important? Because if we do it this way, every single task created from this methodology will be linked with the quantities, with the cost information and directly with the elements in the project. So we skip all this work of assigning the cost of linking the elements to the schedule of creating the schedule altogether one task at a time and we only define the rules to the software and the software generates the schedule itself. So we have got the activities, but we don't have any relations between them. What we have to do here is just to organize them in the logical order. This is something that is pretty much intuitive to every project manager and basically every architect, construction engineer, and any engineer in the world. So basically, you know that you have site preparation works and that in chrono chronological order, these are the first one to start. After them, you will definitely execute structural foundation works. So it's only logical to connect them with the finish start relations. After that, you're gonna definitely first start with the foundation beams. And after you create the beams, you're gonna construct the slabs over the beams. And now the things are becoming a little bit tricky because yes, this is the order on the ground floor, but what's gonna happen on the upper floors? So anyway, after you define the, uh, I mean, the, the, the scheduling algorithm will help us with this later and I'm gonna explain how. So basically after you have completed your slab on the ground floor, you're gonna start with the structural columns on that slab. You're gonna start with the walls and basically you're gonna repeat this process all together for every next floor. So after you complete these columns and walls, you're gonna start with the beams and the slabs. And after you complete final slab, you're gonna put the roof over it. But if you, make your schedule methodology like this, you're saying this to the scheduling engine. First, complete all the site preparation, then start with the foundations. After you complete all the foundations, start with all the beams on the project. So basically, if you start with all the beams on the project, you're gonna have beams, I mean, levitating in the air without support. So we introduced something that we call, if you have this, this ability to select all the relations at once, and you can use this command that says copy to children. 
That means that you will not have to wait for all beams on the project to be executed to start the slabs, but only the beams on certain task level. Let's say beams on certain floor. And after they are completed, you can start with the slab on that floor and continue with the beams on the next floor. But then we have another illogical thing that if you complete beams on the first floor, let's say, and start with the slab on that floor, you are now free to start with the beams on the next floor. But in reality, you don't have any elements to support these beams. You have to wait for structural columns and walls on that floor to be executed first, and then to start with the beams. For that, we have also introduced uh, what we call construction or constructive relation. With this relation, you can basically define or prevent illogical behavior in the schedule like this. So if you put this backward relations, what we also call them, and mark them here as a constructive relations, then you can say that you cannot start with the beams on the next floor until support elements for these beams are actually completed. And this command is flexible. This is only one example of using it. If you're using this for the whole schedule for the, for the whole project, for instance, you can have, I don't know, glass facade on your high rise building. And what you want to do with the glass facade, you don't want to wait all structural works to be executed to start with installation, because I mean, you're gonna need way too much time to complete whole building. But you, don't, you also don't want to start working on this task, let's say after, after one story is completed with, with your uh, construction works, you don't want to start on the story, story below with your facade. You want to have three or four or even five stories as a safety zone. So your works are separated, you don't have problems and risks. What you can do, you can define this relation between your facade and let's say concrete slab on the on your floor and to put constructive offset at let's say five and then you say after you complete constru uh, complete uh, com sorry concrete slab on the floor number 10 then you can start installing facade five stories below on the fifth floor this will help you in case you have, because I mean, you can do this with the lag. You can say, okay, I'm building one story in one, in, in one week. So just start with the facade five weeks after you complete uh, the concrete slab on certain floor. But if something happened and your works are stopped in the construction in, in that floor for the concrete works, I mean, the, the algorithm will only wait for five weeks and anyway start with the facade execution and then you're gonna have a problem. In this way, you're gonna always keep distance between these floors. So we have to return this to the one floor in this example, because this is all we need. If we put more than one, we're gonna get also illogical sequence where we build two stories high columns, and then we start building beams between them. So we'll need only one level of offset here. So we can just click save and close this. So right now we have defined vertical spatial organization, horizontal spatial organization, and functional organization of our project. We just have to do only one slight modification into our zones especially into levels, because remember that we were using something called backward or constructive relations to define that you cannot build beams on certain floor until your columns and walls that support those beams are built. Well, we just need to mark this parent task in the levels or, or building stories and mark constructive. This means that we want these relations to be applied between the stories and not between the phases, which is the other zone that we were creating. So basically, after we have defined these 
three levels of organization of schedule, we can now combine them into something that we call creation template. That's something that you can actually use to put all these levels of organization together to define the order in which they will be executed during the schedule creation. And this template will help you not only to create schedule very quickly, but also to reuse this template on your future projects as well. So this really introduces smart knowledge management to construction management process because you will not have to do everything from scratch on every new project. You will be able to use your knowledge, to use your organizational skills and templates from previous projects to the new one. And I'm gonna demonstrate to you how you're gonna do that. So you're gonna create new template, blank demo template. And here we're gonna just implement all these rules that we have just created. So we're gonna go to refresh children-based creation. We're gonna go to the methodology items and find the methodology we have just created. So basically this says the order of works between these different activities. Then we're gonna introduce the zones as well, the spatial organization of the project. First, we're gonna get levels that we have created. So this one combines, has actually defined the rules between the levels and it says go from the lowest one to the highest one. And the final one that we have created was phases. So this one says go from the phase one to phase two, phase three, and then exterior works. After we have completed this, we can just save it, close, and go to schedule editor tab. Right here, we just have to create blank schedule. So we can call it demo schedule. We can use this cost version or assigned elements that we were not doing the last time, but since we have integrated cost database that is assigned to our model elements, we can now use it to be directly linked into the schedule that we are going to create from the beginning. So if you remember last time, after you create blank schedule, you only get one simple task that has default duration of 40 hours. And remember that for the creating schedule tasks and schedules in general, we were just using this command, going the right click, new task. And the last session, we explained these four workflows in detail. And remember that I said that we are going to explore the fifth one today. And this is how this one works. So you're going to creation wizard. Here, you are able to basically define the same rules that we did in the template. Remember that we were using methodology and zones, but since we don't want to do this for every new schedule, we have created the template and saved it. And right now we can just load it with one click like this, and we can create new and new schedules with the same template that we have already defined. So we click okay, and right now, we got the schedule. This schedule is automatically generated by computer algorithm following the rules or the levels of organization that we have defined. So the first one was the methodology, if you remember, so the types of works. The next one were the levels of the building. Here it's visible, so we can see the levels. And the last one were the phases. So if we go to the line of balance, we're gonna see this spatial organization on this side and the activities on the lines. As in previous cases, the best way to, to check out these schedules, if they are logical and they're good, is through schedule animation. So with schedule animation, we can go to the schedule viewer update animation to the latest schedule and hit play. Let me just find the better angle. And we're gonna see the working sequence. I can remove sites 
because it's going to be easier for us to visualize construction sequence. And we're going to see, I'm going to just adjust a little bit speed of the animation. Sorry for this delay. Okay. And we're going to see the order of work execution according to our newly created schedule. We see that first we have foundation works and that we have works that are separated by phases. You see that the algorithm executed foundation works in one phase, then in the following phase, and then in the next one. And it will follow the same schedule sequence for every floor and for every activity. I'm going. So basically, we can confirm that we got pretty logical working sequence for now. Okay, if we go back to schedule and pop it out, we're gonna see that our activities are pretty vaguely defined. So we have all the works into structural foundations and beams only as one type of task. If we go to the cost editor, we're gonna see that these works are much more detailed defined within the cost. So if we are talking about beams construction, we can talk about installing the formwork, installing reinforcement, concrete pouring and concrete finishing. And besides that, we also have steel beams as a separate type of task. How we can include this into our schedule? Well, we can simply just modify only one level of organization, only the level of organization on methodology. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna make what we call in our software, second level of methodology. Okay, we have defined the main groups of works, but what if within beams, we want to define all these four activities that I just mentioned? Well, simple, you can just go into this, I mean, for the sake of exercise, let's just duplicate this methodology and make demo methodology structural works two levels, just as an example, to see that you can even duplicate, edit and delete these methodologies in the same way as you do with the, with the schedules and cost databases. So we can just double click the beams and go basically one level below the beams. And here we can create new linked items also connected to the, to the cost items within cost database. So the schedule will filter us only the activities connected to the beams. We can simply select them, click OK. And now we are able to define working sequence within beams activity. So we're gonna just say simply, first execute form work, then execute reinforcement, then execute concrete pouring, and at the end, concrete finishing. We're gonna leave steel beams to be as a separate task because it could be done along the concrete beams. Here, for some reason, the algorithm gave us by default constructive relation we don't need it, we just need to select it and uncheck this. And that's it for the beams. So we just have to repeat this for all types of works. I'm gonna just go quickly through this. So when it comes to the slabs, the construction sequence is more or less equal. So we just go to the formwork, reinforcement, concrete pouring and concrete finishing select all relations, the check constructive. Let's go to the level one again. We have to define the same thing within columns. If we go to the columns, we have also five different activities within it. Here, the construction sequence is a little bit different for the cast in place columns. If you remember first for the columns, you have to install a reinforcement then to close it with inform work, then to pour concrete, and at the end to finish the concrete. The check constructive. Also, you have to leave steel columns out of this connected string. Then we have to repeat the same for the walls. 
here with the walls, we have also two types of walls. We have masonry walls that only consist in this cost database from one activity. And we have concrete cast in place walls that will be executed in the same construction sequence as the concrete reinforced concrete columns. So we're going to just define it in the same way like this. Go up. We only have roofs left. We're going to repeat the same construction sequence as for the slabs and the beams. So it's formwork, reinforcement, concrete pouring, and concrete finishing. At the end, we're going to select everything and mark copy to children relation. So we don't have to wait all formwork on the whole project for this to be done, but it's going to be done only in one phase and one story. And then we can start with the next activity. Uh, we forgot to do it for the structural foundations. Here we have a little bit more activities because we have only one activity for foundation piles because it's specific activity that requires certain equipment. And after you complete that, you can start with pile caps that are basically just a simple reinforced concrete elements that you're going to use this simple sequence to execute them like this. And for the last one, the site preparation, we just have one activity that defines it. We only need to repeat this activity as a single node so our scheduling engine can work properly. So I think we have defined the second level for all our activities. We can save this methodology. We can go to creation template and create new methodology called demo template to levels like this. So this time we're going to also use zones, but not zone items, but zone levels. And you're going to see why. Uh, I'm sorry, not zone methodology levels, sorry, methodology levels. So this is the one that we have created, the complex one. And first, we're going to introduce first level of that methodology. That's basically the one that shows first foundation, then slab, then, the, then beam, then slab, and so on. And then we're going to introduce the next level of the same methodology by just clicking two here that will further separate the tasks within the beams into these five different activities that we have. And for the zones, we're going to just repeat the same thing that we did in the previous, in the previous template. And there it is. We have created it. Okay, if we go to the schedule, let's just create new schedule. That's two levels, two levels schedule. We can include cost version. So we have cost information right away. We're gonna create empty schedule. We're gonna go to the new task creation wizard and apply the new template that we have just created. Click OK. And there it is. Let's open it. Now our schedule is much more complex. It has much more tasks. And it has more complex line of balance schedule as well. So if we compare it, this is the first one. And the number says the total number of tasks is 76. And if we see the new one, we're going to see that we have 311 tasks. So four times more tasks created with only slight modification of one level of organization of the schedule. So that's the logic of this workflow. Basically, it will allow you to create schedules much faster with more ease and to create really to create really detailed schedule with defining two or three levels of schedule organization because we were limited with time and our time is almost completely up i will just demonstrate you or import 
the schedule for this sample project, but that is much more developed, I would say, which covers the whole set of works on the project, not only structural works as in this case. So we're gonna just import that schedule and see if it's gonna work. It's this one. We're gonna just find proper cost version of it, update that schedule. And now we have even more complex schedule. We have schedule for this building for all activities on this building. And you're gonna see that it's way more complex than the one that we have created. It has almost 700 tasks in total. It has line of balance schedule optimized. And it has also all the information integrated about cash flow, cumulative cost, S curve, and all the information needed. We're going to just check it through the schedule animation as well, just to see how it looks like here when you have all the activities defined within the schedule, you can see right now that for every element, you basically have two or three or four different tasks. So these are actually formwork, reinforcements, concrete pouring and concrete finishing as separate tasks that we have defined within the methodology. And here how it works basically for the whole building. Let's just turn off curtain panels so you can see that this schedule is actually defined for all types of works, including MEP, including finishes. And that you basically have complete construction sequence and master schedule of the project defined with basically within three levels of organization. I'm going to just show you the methodology of this complex schedule. This is the one. So it's a little bit more complex than the one that we have created, but I would say not even close to the creation of the of more manual creation of the schedule that you see here of like 700 tasks and for and 800 relations. Uh, for the end, I just want to show you one more example that you can also download from our Bexel user area. It's called Bexel Sample Complex Project or a large scale project. So it's a huge set of buildings, I would say complete city block of buildings with schedule that was created in the same way as the one that we have just seen. I'm gonna just demonstrate how huge this schedule is. So as you can see, it contains 16,850 tasks and more than 20,000 relations. There is no way that you can create such a complex schedule in, a, in any traditional scheduling tool without spending months or even a year creating the schedule. And we have created it within few working days, basically, for this project. And to show you how simple is it, we can go to the zone editor and check the zones for this schedule. So this one defines the order in which sequence in which buildings will be executed. This one defines the blocks. This one is for the levels. So in the same way as we did it for the small building, it could be done for 20 buildings at once, basically. And also, if we check construction sequence, the phases are as simple as they are on the simple project. If we go to methodology, you're gonna see that it is not much more complex than the one for the simple office building. So basically, the planner only had to define these relations and these basically methodology items 
And the final result is a complex schedule of more than 16,000 tasks. So it's that simple to work in Bexel Manager. So I also invite you to download this model. It's very interesting, large scale, scale model. It has almost like 700,000 elements included. And if you have a little bit better hardware with more RAM memory and better graphic card, I believe it will work properly on your computer. It will have some problems with, with, the, with the hardware that is not really up to the task. But it is very interesting to see and to exercise this workflow as an advanced workflow on such a large scale project. So that's it for today. I will just check the questions. Let's see. Would it interfere with the logic if not connected? No, it's it's not gonna be it's not gonna interfere with the logic if you don't create relations between stories. What is recommended data from selections a custom breakdown or from cost editor? What as I said. What is recommended? This is a good question. What is recommended? Data from selection sets, custom breakdowns, or data from cost editor? As I said, for the spatial organization of work, it, the best way is to use selection sets or custom breakdowns, but you can also use the properties within the software itself because stories are defined within the software or any basically property that you can put within your elements for the phases. And when it comes to the methodology, you have to use data from cost editor. So methodology items are related to the cost editor. Let's see, we have more questions. Perhaps should I start with the custom breakdown and then add all extra data from cost editor? Uh, yeah, you can start from custom breakdown, but basically uh, what we haven't shown today is how to create cost database. That was shown in the previous sessions, but basically you have to connect methodology with your cost database. That's, that's the right workflow. And when we talk about spatial organization, you have to rely on selection sets, custom breakdowns, or simply the properties that you have within the, within the model itself. So that would be all for today. I think it is a little bit over 60 minutes. Sorry for that. I hope this, will, this was interesting to you and see you next week on the, actually not next week, see you tomorrow for the next topic for the progress tracking in Bexel Manager. And I hope you will be present as well. So goodbye.